All right, let's do an example. We're talking about graphs of equations, and uh, here we have an equation. Y divided by 3x equals 1 half plus 1 over x. So it's an equation of two variables. Uh, its graph is going to be um, a curve in, some, in a 2D, 2D coordinate system. So uh, here are the things I want to ask. First, uh, before we get to the graph, first, if x equals 2, what is y? Right, this is asking about uh, a particular solution to this equation uh, where, where x equals 2. All right, to, to answer that question, all we've got to do is substitute in 2 for x. So I'm going to do that now. y divided by 3 times 2 whoops, equals 1 half plus 1 over x. And notice that when I, when I substituted in, I'm sorry, <laughs> 1 half plus 1 over 2, because x is 2. Notice that when I substituted, substituted in 2 for x here, I introduced these parentheses. I could have instead written 3 times 2, but obviously I don't want to write just 3, 2, because it looks like the number 32. Uh, actually, my recommendation is to always, always, always introduce parentheses when you're doing a substitution, um, unless the variable is, is very truly like by itself. Uh, like in this case, uh, I could have put the parentheses there, but I really don't need them. I, I introduce parentheses because sometimes what you're substituting in is not just a number, not, not just a constant number, but rather like a whole algebraic expression that might require some distributing or something. Um, so it's a good habit to be in to introduce parentheses when substituting. So now I've done this, I want to solve for my y. This is pretty easy. I have a half plus a half over here, so that's equal to 1. So if I take my y divided by 6 equals 1, which I have here, and multiply both sides of this equation by 6, then I have y equals 6. Great. So that means um, the answer to a, uh, if x equals 2, what is y? Well, y would be 6. And that means the point 2, 6 is a solution to this equation, and therefore will be a point on the graph of that equation. All right, b. Given x, what is y? Well, that's a weird question because you didn't tell me what x was. Yeah, that's sort of the point. I mean, here, uh, what we're asking is like, if I give you an x, what will the y be? Come up with a rule that will tell, tell, tell me that. Um, what we did last time was we substituted in a value and then we solved for y. We don't have a value to substitute in, but we can still solve for y, right? Uh, so we're gonna do that. So what this means really is just solve for y in terms of x. That way, if we were given an x, we could stick it right in there and then just do some evaluating with arithmetic and get the, get the y value, right? And we wouldn't have, we've basically done all the algebra up front. So let's redo the algebra, but without specifying the x value. It's a little harder this time. There's the equation, um, and to solve for y, I need to get rid of this 3x, right? So I'm just going to multiply both sides of this equation by, by the 3x so that it will cancel. Oh, is it okay for me to do that? Is it okay for me to multiply both sides of the equation by 3x? Well, yeah, I mean, you can multiply both sides of an equation by the same number as long as that number isn't zero, right? Uh, because if you multiply both sides of an equation by zero, you get zero equals zero. Essentially, you would have erased the information on both sides of the equation, um, which is not what you want to do, right? You don't want to just erase the entire equation because then how, you know, how can you do anything useful with it? Uh, so uh, we should note here that, in fact, x can't be zero. Uh, and the primary reason for that is because it's in the denominator, right? Uh, so we're going to stick up here in our very first line, note x is not equal to zero and uh, keep that in mind throughout this entire process okay because if it's it what we're doing here is trying to manipulate this equation into a new form but it has to be equivalent to the original equation and that includes the allowable values for the variables so in this case x is not zero and can never be zero no matter how we manipulate it so let's just finish this off real quick here uh we're going to multiply both of these terms here by 3x as per the distributive law. So I'm going to write that as like uh, 3 halves x. That's doing the 1 half times 3x. And then when I do 1 over x times 3x, the x's should cancel out, right? Because uh, anything divided by itself is 1, right? That would be the uh, inverse property of multiplication. So, And multiplying by 1, of course, doesn't do anything, so I'm just going to write plus 3. 
And there we go. So I've solved it for y. Okay. Uh, and notice that this is uh, in the form y equals mx plus b, right? Which means it's a linear equation. Uh, the m uh, in this format is the slope of the line, and the b is where the y-intercept would be. Uh, so I can use that to help me uh, do part C here, which is to graph uh, this equation. Let's see? I want here, something like that. Uh, I can find the y-intercept uh, and plot that point on the y-axis, and then I can use the slope of three halves here, the m value, right, the three halves, uh, to help me find another point. So uh, let's first of all, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, that seems like enough. Let's go back one, two, three, four, and a couple down. First we'll plot on the y-axis the point three, uh, or zero, three, right? So there's my where my um, y-intercept would be. Uh, and then I will use the slope of three halves, which is rise over run, recall, three over two, rise over run. So that means I can go up three, one, two, three, and then over two, one, two. And so I'm gonna use, I'm gonna line up with uh, the second, uh, number two on the x-axis there, plot a second point. And I can come in here with my handy dandy uh, ruler here. Uh, go ahead and graph that line. Pow! There we go. Um, and that's the uh, the line, which is the graph of this equation, right? Hmm. Maybe. Uh, although, let's talk about d before we lock that answer in um, for c. Let's talk about d for a moment. Uh, X-intercept and y-intercept. Of course, we can find these by substituting in zero for one variable or the other. Uh, the x-intercept. In this graph, um, you would get you would obtain it by by substituting in zero for y. If uh, if zero is y, then um, you just end up with uh, a zero on the left hand side, right? Zero divided by three x is going to be zero, equals one half plus one over x. And solving this for x, uh, you can see that what we need here is really one half minus one half. So x is going to have to equal negative two, right? So um, that means our x-axis intercept is right over here at negative two, zero, which looks correct given the graph we came up with um, in part C, right? Uh, but the y-intercept is a bit weird. Our y equals mx plus b format suggested that it should be at three, right? The plus b here is meant to tell us the y-intercept. Uh, but note, if you put in zero for x, we have a problem, right? Division by zero. In fact, remember remember how remember how we said that, no, we noted right at the beginning that actually x shouldn't ever equal zero? Yeah. So actually, uh, there's an issue here, um, which is that uh, this is like an undefined scenario, right? We have this division by zero problem when x is zero. So we don't have, we don't have a y-intercept. We could just write none. And we need to edit our graph here to be to be uh, to make it correct. Which by by getting in here and taking the um, the point at where x equals zero on the y-axis here, and actually just removing it. It's like we're going to get in there and just snip, cut it out. Um, we represent that with a with a circle, with, which is not filled in. Like, you can call that like an open circle. It's a hole in our graph, right? Everything else about the graph is perfect because in all other ways. This original equation we started with is equivalent to the one we arrived at via our algebraic manipulation here, right, in part b. So it should be exactly like this linear equation in every way except for this big caveat, which is that x can't equal zero, um, giving us that no y-intercept. So uh, I hope that uh, makes sense. Um, this is an example, by the way, of a, a type of rational equation which simplifies to a linear equation. Its graph is like that of a linear equation, but with this major exception, uh, which is important. Uh, so that'll do it for that example.